everyone, welcome back to episode 12 of Platinum. Today we have a huge account, 883 Platinums. My afternoon has been taken up, but it is a fantastic account that we have here with Banana Sausage. Now, Banana Sausage has been uh, playing on this account for about 12 years, their first Platinum being in Fallout 3, which is a hell of a first plat, I think. Uh, if I reflect back on my PS3 days, I think that was actually one of my first Platinums too. So that's a cool little connection that we have there. Now, Banana Sausage has a really good account here. I've sort of skimmed through a couple of things here. We've got some very impressive sports titles to uh, to see here. Uh, 1,059 ultra rare trophies, which is crazy. Uh, I think I have like 200 in, uh, in comparison, but Let's jump in. Now, before we do, of course, uh, I'm gonna plug the Platinum Standard Discord, uh, Discord for Trophy Hunters to talk about trophies. If you'd like your own account to be reviewed, you can put it down in the list there. It's all good fun. Uh, now let's jump in. Alrighty, now before we do start, uh, because of the sheer size of this account uh, and not wanting the video to be six hours long, I probably won't stop at every single game. Also, if there are uh, sort of easier games like sub an hour, I'll probably sort of more skim over them, such as the 46 Fragments of Midnight that you see below. But let's get started on this. We've got Root Letter to start. Uh, I've finally got the name right. Go Team Wu. Uh, 007's Legends is a really impressive one. As you can see there, it is an unobtainable these days with 14 unobtainable trophies. Uh, I believe that was like a, a James Bond, but... Uh, but like with multiplayer and stuff. Uh, 1976, back to Midway. This is an aerial combat sort of a game, I believe. We've got the first of what you'll see is many FIFAs in FIFA 10 and FIFA 2014. Now, both are unobtainable. Uh, you'll see that with a lot of sports games. After like a year and the new entry coming out, they usually become unobtainable, which is a really sort of sucky way of doing things. But uh, I am curious, if we go into 2010 here, if we, if we come in here, do you have, oh, oh, no, you don't. Banana sausage, that, that sucks to see. I'm sorry to see that, man. Uh, that is definitely very unfortunate. But if we go back to here, we've got uh, 2064 Read Only Memories. This is a visual novel that I believe was an offering on PS Plus at one point. Uh, 36 Fragments of Midnight three times. Uh, Five Star Wrestling is one I've never heard of. Uh, I... Yeah, I've never heard of Five Star Wrestling. I am curious as to what that actually is. A Fisherman's Tale, we've got a way out. This is the two-player co-op game where you sort of have to break out of prison together. Uh, I would love to do this game at some point. So, you know, if someone wants to play it with me, uh, I need friends. Uh, we've got some Access Denied. Uh, I believe those are easy peasies. Accounting Pluses, I believe, made by the same people that did the Rick and Morty. Uh, VR game, which is kind of cool. And I've heard very, very good things about it, actually. It's one where I don't have VR, but if I did, that is absolutely one that I would want to do myself. Acted Out XL times two. Uh, we've got Acted Out a Game of Charades. I didn't know this was a series. This is exciting. Uh, Active Neurons. Actual Sunlight is here. Adam's Venture Origins. This is the Bargain Bin uh, Uncharted. Uh, that actually has a sequel or a prequel that uh, doesn't have a platinum, which I learned on an account a couple of weeks ago, funny enough. Uh, Agents of Mayhem, this is a spin-off to Saints Row. Uh, I believe it's more top-down twin stick shootery sort of thing. It's got some unobtainable trophies. I think it's one, two, two including the platinum. So one unobtainable trophy uh, that I think was to do with like sending an item to some to someone or something like that so do be cautious if you are trying to complete saints rose about that unobtainable right there uh the air conflicts games were uh more sort of aerial combat games i've heard very good things about these ones actually especially vietnam there i've heard really good things about that's one that uh i've often eyed up myself uh i think there's some rough like challenge modes or something like that or difficulty stuff uh, Albedo Eyes from Outer Space. We've got Owl's Madness Returns. If it's not already obvious, uh, Platinum Sausage likes to complete games. He's got a very, very high completion. I believe it was 88%, I think. Uh, hold on, now I want to scroll up and prove it. Uh, 80, 88% right there, as you can see. Uh, 1,048 games for 860 complete, which is super impressive. Um, 
Alrighty, we get down into the Alien games. This hurts my soul as a fan of the Alien games. Alien Isolation, uh, only an E rank. I love Alien Isolation, I would say, uh, if I was to recommend a game so far, Banana. This is one to definitely go back and clean up. It's a fantastic game. Some tricky trophies, getting through the game without killing everyone, getting through the game without dying. Some of the later chapters where there's like face huggers and stuff like that are definitely rough. Uh, there's definitely some scenarios which can feel unfair, but you can always back your save up to the cloud, which makes it a lot easier than simply restarting the entire game. Uh, Alien vs Predator PS3. This is a game I would actually love to do myself. I don't have PS3 games on Symmetry, but if I were going to, Aliens vs Predator and Colonial Marines are two that I would love to do myself. I actually am tempted to look into the multiplayer for both. Uh, and pick up copies of them on uh, on Amazon or something like that reasonably soon. I know uh, Beautiful Torment in the Discord is looking at doing Colonial Marines and stuff, so I am tempted to jump on that myself. Uh, Alien Spire Team Elite, this is actually one of the games that myself and two very good friends of mine are currently working through. It's tough. It's tough. Think... Alien, uh, Alien Fire Team Elite, essentially think uh, Left 4 Dead, Back 4 Blood, but with uh, Xenomorphs from Alien, and it's tricky. Some of those harder difficulties, we uh, we actually celebrated a, a victory that we'd been working on a while uh, yesterday, beating the second hardest difficulty on a particularly hard chapter. Uh, if you played the game, all I need to say is Honica, and, uh, and you'll understand what I mean. All-Star Fruit Racing... Uh, Fruit? I, I, fruit? I want to drive. Can I drive a pineapple car? That's, that's my real question here is, can I drive a pineapple car? Alone in the Dark, this is a uh, very early PS3 game, I believe, and I believe it didn't do well, right? It was, it's the one with the torches, right? I think I remember Alone in the Dark. Along Together, uh, we've got some Amnesia Memories, which is the VR game uh, that I, I've heard some pretty... That story is very confronting from uh, from what a few people in the Discord have told me. Uh, we've got some Among Us twice, in fact. This is a game where if you've got a lot of console, uh, if you've got multiple consoles or things like mobile phones, you can smash out Among Us fairly easily. Uh, we've got some AO Tennis. So tennis, uh, you can play as famous tennis players. My, my knowledge of tennis these days is severely lacking. Uh, it's, it's not my sport. I like, if a sport's got tackling in it, then, uh, then you've sold me, you've won me over. Mm -hmm. uh, Apocalypse Rider here. We've got uh, Apothean, which is actually an interesting one. It's one that I, I've been meaning to do Apothean myself, actually. Uh, the thing that holds me back on it, right, is when you use the map menu, uh, it's like semi its parent yellow. And I just, because the whole game is like shades of like yellow and gold and stuff uh, to essentially fit the, the, um, the, 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 what would I call it? Like, like marble Greek. Like it's almost like it's, it's almost like the paintings that you see on pottery and stuff is the art style. Um, they've got a, they've got an actual name and, and I'm kind of kicking myself that I've forgotten what it is given that I studied uh, ancient Greece for a bit. But, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's got like a semi-transparent map that's yellow on a yellow background for the actual game. And I just can't see anything. I, I don't know if it's my eyes or, or a flaw in the game, but I yeah, I really struggle to actually see things there, unfortunately. We've got some arcade series here in Dig Dug, Gallagher, Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, all classics. Uh, obviously, Gallagher is the space shooty one. Dig Dug's the one where you dig holes. And Pac-Man is Pac-Man. Uh, Arcade Spirits, I've never heard of. Uh, Arizona Sunshine's actually one that uh, is another one where if I had VR, I would like to do this one as well. It's another zombie shooter sort of one. Uh, Ark Evolved 100%. I'm really jealous because anytime I try and do the collectibles for the DLC, uh, the game crashes. Now, you've done it in a day and seven hours. So banana sausage, I look me in the eyes. You use the console commands, didn't you? I'm onto you. Uh, I know because I use them as well. So I know I know that you can do it that in uh, that quicker time. Uh, Army of Two Devil's Art Cartel. This is the one without unobtainable trophies. This is 100% doable. Army of Two was fantastic. I loved these games. These are these are some of my favorite shooters, actually. Uh, the other one being unobtainable due to a mask trophy that, that I 
assume you haven't done based on the fact that it's on this list. Uh, Art Rally is next. It's a, it's a racing game. Arts Pulse, Asphalt Injection. Ooh. You know, Banana Sausage, we need to have a talk. You have nearly 900 Platinums and only three of them are, four of them are Assassin's Creed Platinums. It hurts my soul. It, it hurts, it hurts. We've got Sue's Platinum there in 2011. That's not surprising. That's a lot of people's earlier Platinum there. Uh, a lot of people have Assassin's Creed 2 as their first Platinum, actually, funny enough. Uh, Liberation's Platinum there, which is impressive because you had to do the multiplayer. Uh, three. Uh, three you haven't completed. I can understand that, but uh, the servers are shutting down in September. Should you uh, should you want to wrap those up at some point, potentially. Uh, and then Revelations as well is also shutting down. So those multiplayers you might want to uh, get onto fairly quickly. Uh, and then Syndicate, you've got the 100%, which I'm actually impressed with because you don't see Syndicate's 100% a lot. And in my opinion, that's actually got some really good DLC. The Jack the Ripper DLC is quite fun. Uh, this is before Ubisoft's DLCs were all bloody roguelikes. Uh, Astro's Playroom, uh, it's built in with the console. It's awesome. I think we see this game nearly every week where there's a PS5 involved. Uh, Azura's Rap is a super underrated PS3 game. Uh, at sundown, Attack of the Toy Tanks times two. We've got some more awesome peas. I don't think this is the first time we've seen them on here. Um, are they are they awesome? How do you make an awesome pea? Is it you boil them? I, do you mash them? I, I don't know. Uh, awkward. That's how I feel after making the pea joke just then. And then uh, and then we've got a double stack of back for blood, which is actually really really cool. I I'm assuming. I'm going to make an assumption here, and I think it's a fairly educated one. Uh, three weeks and five days for the PS5 version. You've done everything, but I assume the latest two DLCs that have come out. Uh, and then you've done the exact same thing here for the for the PS4 version, but in four minutes. Either you drink a lot of Red Bull and are very talented, or that's a cheeky auto pop that I see right there. Uh, and then we've got some uh, Back to the Future. This was the first of the... Uh, of, oh, this is an early Telltale on the PS3. I think the game is the one that comes with the the full episode, uh, all of the episodes in one list. Uh, you can, of course, obviously get them standalone as well. Uh, and then we've got Bandit 6 Combined Arms, which I don't know what that is, to be fair. Uh, basketball Training is a basketball game where you train. Next up, we get into the Batman games here with Arkham Asylum just sort of started. Uh, you've dipped your toes in the city and Origins as well. Uh, Blackgate, funny enough, is a 100%, which I believe is kind of like a, a side scroller that was on the Vita and I think the 3DS of all things. Uh, and then we've got some Telltale Batmans here with the Enemy Within and the uh, the first game in the, in the series twice. Uh, we've got some Battle Rockets. Uh, I know nothing about back battle rockets, uh, but then we get into some pretty impressive battlefields uh, Battlefields here with the first game 100% which is no easy feat due to the fact that you for a lot of the DLC have to rent private servers and get about eight people into a lobby. Um, I know a good friend of mine is sort of looking at potentially doing Battlefield 1 at some point and if they do I'll probably be jumping in there as well. Uh, Battlefield 3, just a B rank, fair enough. That was a Battlefield that I wasn't particularly fond of myself. Uh, Battlefield 4, Platinum, no DLC. Hardline, Platinum, no DLC, which is a shame because I do know that some of those DLC, as you can see by the icon here, are unobtainable. Also, if you see the little people icon, such as this one here, that just means that there's active gaming sessions on PSMP+. Plus. So if you, if you do see a game such as, uh, say, Battlefield 1, uh, and you go, huh, that's a game I would like to boost myself at some point, then these show that there are active sessions should you want to uh, join one. Uh, Battlefield 5's 100% before it was free on PS Plus too, so uh, you were an early adopter by the look of it. Uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2, super impressive one right there, as you can see by the four years and four months. That one definitely requires a lot of work. Uh, Battleship, this is a, tie, a movie tie-in with the really shitty movie. Uh, Bata Tabatu, no clue. Uh, Beach Buggy Racing, this is one that uh, is often surprisingly quite a challenging uh, buggy racing game. So sort of like Mario Kart and stuff, an arcade racer. Bears Can't Drift, I mean, I'm not going to try and prove you wrong. 
Uh, Bendy and the Ink Machine is actually one that I've heard very good things about, funny enough. Uh, I believe Bendy and the Ink Machine is kind of like a platformer of sorts. Uh, Beyond Two Souls times two. Uh, these are David Cage sort of uh, cinematic story, slow burners, kind of like Detroit Become Human. I think this is actually the rarest of his games by quite a bit. Uh, BFF or Die, easy peasy, I guess. Uh, Big Fest, I've never heard of, but it does have an unobtainable trophy. It's got it's got two right there. Uh, Binary Domain, an E rank. Ooh, that uh, that hurts. With a one trophy out of fifty, I I know the pain. I have that with Hades. Uh, Bio Mutant. This is a game that came out last year. It's like a a big open world one where you play as like a mutated little uh, little furry dude there. Um, I think you're trying to like bring all the clans together or something like that, or you can just take over them all. I've heard mixed things. I've heard some people kind of like it, but it's kind of very shallow. It's sort of once you get past the fact that it looks pretty, there's really not much there I've heard of, of substance, I guess. We then get into a huge chunk of Bioshocks. Jeez Louise, you're a fan of Bioshock. This is kind of cool to see in all honesty. Uh, Bioshock 1 Japan twice. Uh, European once, we've got two North Americans there by the look of it, uh, three Bioshock, two Japan, uh, all three are the PS4, you haven't tackled the PS, no, you have tackled the PS3 one, hold on. So, of the Bioshocks, the most impressive one here in my opinion is Bioshock 2 on the PS3. The reason being, you have to get to level, I believe, 60 in the multiplayer, uh, as with every PS3 game. At the time, this had attacked on multiplayer. Um, and it was, it was tough. It was a, it was a tough one from memory. You have to, uh, I haven't done it myself, obviously I'm not talented, but, um, it's, it's a tough one. You've got to get quite a few people in there. You've got to, you know, see all the maps, which requires everyone to have the DLCs and stuff like that. It's, it's a whole thing. And then we wrap the list up with some, uh, infinite, which is pretty tricky as well. Can confirm some of those, some of those things like the arena maps, uh, rough, rough. Blue Ribbon Medal, or whatever that's called. Uh, thank goodness for the Barry Let's See glitch, because, uh, there was no way I was doing that legit. Uh, we've got some Bird Plus, Black and White Bushido, some Black the Fall, uh, Blackwood Crossing. These are, these are fairly, fairly popular sort of quicker games. Uh, a lot of them are very story driven. Uh, probably more sort of walking sims of sorts, I guess you would call them. Um, we've got some Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, uh, Blindfold, which I've never actually heard of that one. Blood and the Truth is a really interesting VR one. I believe that is like a cop sort of one from memory. Uh, Bloodbath, Body Count, Bonfire. Then we're getting into some Borderlands here, which is kind of cool. Uh, with the first game, 100% on PS4. Uh, Borderlands 2, you've started on the either the PS3 or the Vita. Dipped your toes in, haven't got too far. It looks like it's the PS3 because the one below it's the PS4's VR, uh, which is another one where you've sort of played it a little bit but haven't got too far into it. Uh, Borderlands 3, though, you've got the Platinum. Uh, the DLC... Hasn't been touched because I think the base game is 48%. Uh, what I will say about it is A, Borderlands 3 is kind of a little bit of a letdown in comparison to how good Borderlands 1 and 2 are especially. Um, but the DLC, oh, it's just... Some of the DLC in the first season pass is kind of good. Uh, the one with Hammerlock, for example, I really liked. Uh, the one with Krieg was kind of okay. Like th those were, they were okay. Uh, the Moxie, the Moxie heist one was kind of cool, but super forgettable. Uh, but the second DLC pass is like a, a battle royale and like a director's cut alternative, like events trophy thing or something. It's not worth the 30 Australian dollars or whatever they're charging for. I think it's closer to 50, which is crazy in comparison. So I do not blame you for, uh, for leaving that just the platinum there. And then Borderlands, the pre-sequel is another one. You sort of just dabbled the old toe in, uh, you're following up with some box VR and some Bravo team. These are both VR games that are both semi rare. So that's super impressive. Uh, Brink, Brink was probably one of the biggest flops that I can think of. Uh, that game was hyped up so much and then just didn't really deliver on any of it unfortunately uh we've got some broken age here uh we're following up with bulletstorm full clip edition which i love to see because i was i was actually quite a fan of bullet uh bulletstorm it's 
a shooter where you a lot of the trophies are involving things like various different ways of killing stuff which is kind of uh fun and unique uh bully this is this is the rockstar game that's gta but in a school for example um really good story i liked how the game sort of forced you to go to classes as well like you might be you might be given a kid a wedgie in the car park one second. The next second, you might be using a Bunsen burner to light a homeless dude on fire. And then you go into class. It was a, it was a good mix. It was a good entertaining game. It's it's actually got a different name in, uh, in I believe, uh, England and Australia. It's like Sick Parvis. Uh, no, it's not Sick Parvis Magna. That's Uncharted. Uh, Kane Carnus Edits or something like that. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm sure someone in the comments will uh, will let me know what it actually is. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Bunny Raiders, this is a fairly easy peasy. Burly Men at Sea, I've talked about on end. This is a PS Plus game that was relatively easy peasy, uh, relatively forgettable. I did not really enjoy my time with that one at all, to be uh, perfectly honest with you. And then we got some Burnout Paradise here in the PS4 one, which has, uh, sorry, the PS3 one, which has unobtainables, and then the PS4 one on NA and EU, uh, both stacks, essentially. And then to wrap out the bees, we have Buzz the Ultimate Music Quiz, which if you think back to the PS2 days, Buzz was like the quiz game that was bloody everywhere. You had the little like uh, remote thingies that you'd press to try and like get questions and stuff right. It was it was good fun. It was good fun. Alrighty, next up we have quite an impressive stack of CODs here with COD Classic on the PS3. Uh, difficult, difficult. This is one of the ones where your health doesn't come back, so you've got to look for med kits uh, around the level. We've got uh, Advanced Warfare's Platinum, but no 100%. I can understand that the zombies in Advanced Warfare are actually fairly tricky. Uh, Black Ops, Black Ops Classified. Black Ops 2, you sort of dabbled in, but didn't get too far. Uh, a couple of the trophies, such as Big Leagues, are now unobtainable. Uh, we've got some Black Ops 3 on the PS4. Again, another dabble. Um, I Yeah, that's one that I would say is probably, if you're going to clean up a COD, that's one I would recommend, maybe. Uh, Modern Warfare, we've got Modern Warfare 2 and 3 as well. Uh, we've remastered following up on the, on the Modern Warfares at the end there. Uh, Vanguard, actually, you've been working on today, and I would not be surprised if you earn the platinum on that during this video, because I saw your last trophy was about 15 minutes before I started this uh, this video, and I assume this video is going to be a couple of hours long. Uh, World at War is uh, is a classic, really good COD. Uh, probably one of my favorites of the older CODs. Uh, World War II, absolutely underrated one there. It hurts my soul to see that at an E rank. And uh, then we go into the Call of uh, Juarez. Uh, Bound for Blood and the Cars Hell. These were fun first-person shooters as well. Uh, I think they're made by the guys that did Dying Light from memory. Um, we've got some Cannonball, some Captain America Super Soldier. This is a movie tying game. Speaking of moving tying games, we've got the Cars 2. Uh, catch a release. We've got some chess here. Uh, you're apparently a big fan of chess because we've got Chess Ultra as well. Uh, both done very, very quickly as well. Chicken Police is a really fun uh, sort of investigating game where you play as a chicken who is a police officer, uh, believe me or not. We've got two chickens on the roads, uh, some Chim Party. I've never heard of Chim Party. I assume based on the look of it that it's potentially like a Mario Party sort of uh sort of clone. Uh, Chivalry Medieval Warfare is actually a phenomenal game. This is like a first person uh, medieval game. Think the combat's very similar to Kingdom Come Deliverance, for example, uh, where essentially you are trying to kill other people in, in classic battlefield modes, such as Team Deathmatch and stuff like that. Uh, Chroma Gun, we've got some Claire. Uh, some Coaster, this is, this is a, I believe, a, a roller coaster game of sorts. Uh, Code Realize, some Coffin Dodgers. This is another uh, relatively easy peasy like racing game where you play as old people in in uh, in carts and stuff like that. Color Guardians. We've got two Conan Exiles. That DLC must have really hurt you to see come out uh, last year, I believe, years after the game 
was relevant. I know that. Uh, I know I have to go back and do that DLC too at some point. Uh, we've got some Concrete Genie, 100%. That hurts me because I would love to do that 100% myself at some point, but it's uh, no VR, sadly. We've got some Contagion VR. Uh, I like that we're seeing a lot of VRs actually, because as you can see below, we've got some cool painter VR. Uh, we've had a couple of VRs beforehand as well uh, that are that are really really cool. Like the Arizona zombie one uh, comes to mind. Crash Bandicoot, you dipped you dipped your toe in, but uh, it didn't get too far. I can definitely understand that. I enjoyed that game so much as a child, and going back to it as an adult, not even remotely as much. Uh, maybe one day I'll do the series. Probably. Probably not. Uh, we've got some Creed Rise to Glory. This is a VR boxing game uh, based on the movie Creed, I believe. Uh, some Paugi. Uh, you gotta have you gotta have Paugi, don't you? We've got some final words to Doku. Paugi's got it all. Uh, we've got some Crisis here in the PS3 ones too, which are the ones that required a lot of work back in the day. Uh, the first game is the only one I've played recently, and it is it is it is aged. Uh, it is, is very slow and clunky, but 2 especially has a lot of multiplayer that is now very unobtainable. And I think 3... 3's got multiplayer because there's a, there's a gaming session there that gives it away. And then CSI was, funny enough, another one made by Telltale, I believe. This is a very early uh, Telltale game that I think was made the same time. I think they also made a game for Lost, funny enough. And I think these were both made in like... 2007 2008 like riders trophies were were coming out and becoming a thing we got dagger daggerhood twice uh that's a retallica game i believe dante's inferno is a really good god of war clone uh with dlc that can be semi hard to get i know uh a couple people in the discord have told me you can get it on the uh european digital store i believe it was uh we've got some dark legion this is like a, uh, a shooter from memory. Dark Void, Day of the Tentacle, that's a LucasArts like point and click game that I think was free on PS Plus at some point. Uh, Daytona, I actually don't know anything about Daytona. Uh, Dead Effect, then we're getting some really cool Dead Islands here actually. Dead Island, uh, Dead Island Riptide, and then the two games remastered on the PS4. There's some tricky multiplayer there. There's some multiplayer that requires you to do things like arenas and beating a number of quests with four people and stuff like that. So kudos to you there, Banana Sausage. That's actually a really cool stack to see. Uh, Dead Nation, we're getting to some dead space here with the first game Platinum and the second game. Uh, you sort of dabbled a little bit into uh, the second one obviously has the notorious beat the hardcore difficulty uh, with only three saves. Uh, very, very tricky. Very, very tricky. I remember trying that as a as a as a wee young lad back in the day and failing absolutely miserably but it's a game uh like the alien versus predator and stuff that if i were to add ps3 onto my account that is absolutely one that i would jump straight into uh we've got some dead synchronicity some dead to rights these are these are all zombie games i'm noticing the banana sausage likes these zombies i'm i'm expecting to see dying light somewhere on this list uh deadpool this is actually i think i don't think you can buy this anymore i think D, i think deadpool's been delisted uh digitally so if you do want this game i think you have to get it physically uh, we've got some death loop here. This is made by the same people that did Dishonored and Prey. It's got a pretty cool concept where when you die, you go back to the start of the loop. It's it's a roguelike. Of course it is. Everything these days is a roguelike. But um, I've heard relatively good things. It's one that I do want to try myself. Uh, obviously, I really like the Dishonored games that I'm playing through Prey at the moment. Uh, so definitely up my alley, I, uh, I believe. We've got some Deep Black, some Deformers. Uh, De uh, Delhi, what is that word? Delhi Ryant? Uh, it's a new one to me. Uh, we got some Depona, some Deracine, some Destruction All Stars. I believe that was free on PS Plus in March, and uh, and you smash that out in only five days, which is kind of impressive given that that's a 1.89% ultra rare. Uh, some D Detroit Become Human. I. I didn't like Detroit Become Human. Uh, I, I've said this a few times on this uh, series. It had a cool idea and then just kind of waffled about for ages. Uh, there's a whole lot of nothing in that game, uh, but cool idea. 
Detuned, we've got some Deus Ex Human Revolution. Uh, this was the last Deus Ex that I played and a really good one. From memory, it has multiplayer, does it not? I think it does. I think it's got multiplayer. We've got some Devious Dungeon, uh, three stacks of decks. Uh, Diablo 3, 100% is actually super impressive. This is the uh, one with all of the expansions and stuff. Essentially, they release Reaper Cells as the DLC as a standalone with the base game included on this list. Think uh, Dragon's Dogma and Dark Arisen. Uh, Dino Frontier, I've never heard of. Uh, then we get into some dirt games. Dirt games are uh, apparently very, very fun. I've I've been eyeing up doing Dirt 5 myself at some point. Uh, as you can see, the Platinum's quite high, but the 100%'s a little bit lower just because I think there is actually quite a few uh, DLC trophies. Um, and then Dirt Rally's there as well. The first Dishonored, you've got the Platinum, not the 100%. I can absolutely understand that because that DLC, the Dunwall Trials or the Dunkirk Trials or whatever they're called, are awful. They're so rough. Some of the ones, like I remember one in particular where... Uh, essentially there's like two gangs fighting one another and you have to kill every single person which is so hard after waves where like the dudes that can one shot each other show up and they're all hostile to each other uh oh it's a hundred percent up to the mercy of the rng gods there is there is not much in the way of strategy um and uh, it's it's a shame because the, the base game Dishonored and uh, the other DLC are actually genuinely fantastic. Uh, we've got some disintegration here, some dissection. Divinity Original Sins 2. Uh, we saw this, I believe, on Heather's account last week as well. Uh, very, very fun uh, RPG. Think of, uh, very similar to sort of gameplay that you would see in something like Baldur's Gate, for example. We've got Don't Knock Twice. Some donut, donut County. This is where you play as a giant hole that sucks everything in. Some Doodle God. Some Doom 2016. Uh, no Doom Eternal. I don't blame you. Downwell. We've got a lot of Drawn to Death here, which is actually completely unobtainable. Uh, the as you can see, the list only contains unobtainable trophies. This was like a a PVP game. We did a lot of drawing and stuff. Very rare platinums. Uh, the Japanese one you can auto pop quite a bit of it. Hence the uh, the higher rarity on it, but uh, super impressive. And then we get into, of course, Drive Club, which is also unobtainable due to things like licenses to different vehicles uh, expiring and the game not being able to then have them anymore. And there being trophies tied to them. Driver San Francisco, I believe this game might be going down uh, next month, I believe, September. So maybe get onto that. Uh, Banana Sausage at some point, maybe. Uh, this is the game where essentially you play as like a, a cop who can who can trans, transform his soul into other people driving. So you can sort of bunny hop between different vehicles and stuff. It was an interesting premise. Uh, definitely not my favorite driver game, but it was it was solid. Uh, Drowning, we got some Ducati. This is a like a ba uh, bike riding uh, racing game. Duke Nukem 3D, some Dungeon Siege. I think these are like tower defense sort of games. Uh, we've got Dust and Elysian Tail. We've got the first Dying Light, no Bozak Horde. I can tell you now that DLC that you are missing is definitely the Bozak Horde. Uh, Diagolite is obviously made by the people that did Dead, uh, Dead Island. Very, very good game. The sequel's also pretty good. They're, they're both a little bit glitchy, so bear that in mind if uh, if you decide to tackle them. Uh, definitely both a little bit glitchy, but very fun open world zombie parkour simulators. And then we wrap up the Ds with Dying Reborn three times. Next up, we have quite an impressive stack of UFC games here, which are obviously uh, fighting games with very, very hard requirements. As you can see there by the 0.71, the 1.39, the 0.72, and the 3.2% completions there for all of the uh, UFC games. The first one being unobtainable, actually. Uh, with uh, with nine unobtainable trophies, I assume those are due to ranked trophies, perhaps. Eagle Flight is a VR game where you play as an eagle, believe it or not, uh, and you fly around doing eagle stuff. Uh, we've got some eFootball pairs, which I think... I think they've discontinued this, have they not? What I find interesting about eFootball here is... Uh, the season update actually has its own trophy list for reasons. I assume... 
I assume it's technically like FIFA, where that's just the year afterwards, and they've named it slightly different to uh, to cop f to not cop flack, but. Uh, Especially given that the first one there has a lot of unobtainable trophies. We've got some Ela, some Electronauts, some Enemy Front. That is a first person shooter that was very, very average from memory. Uh, some Energy Cycle with the PS5 one having a different logo that makes it look nothing like the rest of them. Uh, some Energy Invasion, some Enslaved Odyssey to the West, which is a super underrated PS3 game. I, I really like Enslaved Odyssey to the West. It's kind of like an action adventure game is how I would uh, describe it. We then got four Epic World Search collections, uh, two of the first game, two of the second game. Uh, I believe these are ones where you find words believe it or not uh esper ether one or ether one i believe evasion everybody's gone to the raptures a uh unique walking sim where you're essentially trying to work out where everyone is they've all sort of vanished i believe it's set in like an, a, a small english county or something like that uh you started evolved now evolved does have uh, a couple of unobtainable trophies evolve was fun uh it was it was a unique pvp where essentially one person was a giant monster and the other people were uh dudes trying to kill the giant monster and so each each war, uh each soldier essentially had a different class with different weaponry and stuff and then the the monster was a a giant scary monster set on tearing into shreds uh fear three this is the last of the fear trilogy uh probably the weakest in all honesty these were sort of uh, first person shooter horror games, which is a really weird combo that worked really, really well. Um, I don't know if Fear 3 has multiplayer. I know Fear 2 didn't, I know Fear 2 is now unobtainable, but I'm not entirely sure about Fear 3 in all honesty. We then get into a really, really awesome stack of F1s here with uh, 11, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Uh, all very, very good. I have a, a good mate of mine uh, does a lot of streaming of F1 and stuff, so that's that's my experience with it. I'm not a big race watcher, uh, but, uh, but it's very cool. I, uh, I do try and force him to sing life as a highway every single race so uh shout out to josh if you are if you're watching this man uh we've got some fall guys here um unfortunately you oh this is now unobtainable for you as well banana sausage it looks like you were doing this right up until the servers were closed um i am sorry to see that man that's uh that definitely sucks we then get into the fallout as i said fallout 3 was banana sausages first platinum trophy um very very good game now fallout 4 very okay game. i not as big a fan of Fallout 4 in all honesty. Uh, I don't think it did anything particularly better than Fallout 3. I think the dialogue wheel was worse. I think the the world itself was fairly boring in all, in all honesty. The DLCs were definitely worse. Uh, besides Far Harbor, that one was fantastic. But yeah, it was sort of just... It just came out and it was just kind of a, a dumbed down version of Fallout 3, which was already a dumbed down version of Fallout. Uh, Fallout 76. I actually think this is the best Fallout uh, of, of the newer ones besides New Vegas. New Vegas is the best. So I want to make that clear. But I think of the games made by Bethesda, Fallout 76 is the best. And I played it before NPCs are a thing. Um, I didn't encounter the glitches that a lot of other people had. I... Definitely had one rough glitch where I had to get to level 100 twice. That was fun. Uh, thanks, Bethesda. Um, but it's... If you like Fallout, it's it's got the most interesting of the worlds. Uh, it's got, you know, you've got giant coal mines. You've got water theme parks. It, it had diversity. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, what it didn't have was NPCs, which, which have been added since. So uh, definitely one I need to go back and clean up myself at some point. Shelter is the mobile kind of spin-off where you make your own vault um, and, and make them do things and, and breed and, and all that fun uh, stuff. I think you can manipulate the clock to get a lot of the trophies. Uh, we've got Fallout New Vegas. This is the best Fallout in my opinion. Uh, very, very interesting setting. The best story of all of them. Uh, you could argue it's the only one with a story. Um, 
uh, yeah, it's uh, that, that's the one that I would probably recommend. Very interesting DLCs as well. Ones like Blood Money are actually really, really cool. Uh, we then get into some family game night, which is the classics like Cluedo and Pictionary and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, we then get into some Far Cry's. You, you've done some work on Far Cry 2, uh, which is definitely interesting. We've got Far Cry 3 on PS3, which is actually really cool because you've done all of the multiplayer. Uh, classic editions, the PS4 remaster. This one doesn't have multiplayer at all. Uh, Fallout Far Cry 4 does have multiplayer. You've smashed that out. 5, you've done... The Platinum, but not the DLC. Uh, I would say that the DLC in 5 is actually pretty fun. The Vietnam one's a lot of fun. The Mars one is awful. Uh, and the Zombies one I actually had a blast with. Uh, I met quite a cool uh, fellow Australian trophy hunter boosting Far Cry 5. And then you've got 6s, Platinum, but no DLC, which again, I can absolutely understand because stuff the roguelikes. I don't like Ubisoft's thing at the moment of chucking on a really half-baked roguelike is all of their DLCs uh, and, and, and Far Cry 6 and, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla are definitely suffering from that at the moment, I'm afraid. Uh, then we've got Primal and New Dawn to wrap it up. We've then got a truck racing game, which is a terrifying concept. And then we get into a really cool stack of FIFAs. Holy moly. This might be... That might be the coolest FIFA stack I've ever seen. We've got 13, we've got, sorry, even higher than that. We've got 10, 11, 13, 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17. I'm learning numbers. 18, 19, 20, 22, 22 times two. That is, that's really cool. That is really cool to see right there. As you can see by the trend of this, and I was sort of saying earlier in this uh, video, you can see, these sports games have a really nasty thing where they just kind of shut the server after each and every like re subsequent release. So for example, 13 would have shut when 14 came out, 14 would have shut when 15 came out and, and so on and so on. But you have got nearly every single one of these at 100% with 10, 11 and 13 being the only exceptions and that is... That is awesome. That is that that's get, that gets the gold simi seal of approval, uh, which is not a thing that I've made. But if I had it, it'd pop up on the screen now. Wow, magical! It's cool. Um, but yeah, that is a seriously really cool stack to see. Congratulations there, banana sausage. Fantastic. I love to see it. Uh, moving on, however, we've got some fighting ex layer, some fighting vipers. Uh, I believe that's a fighting game. Some finger fitness, which. Fair enough, 99.2% completion rate. First Class Trouble is kind of like a clone of Among Us. Uh, you're trying to work out who the, the killers are. Uh, it's one that I've been semi-interested in myself, funny enough. Uh, hence why I know what it is. Some Flatland Prologue, some Flat Out 4. I, I don't know what this is. I believe it's a racer by the look of it, but it does have unattainable trophies. Some Flipping Depth, some Floor Plan Hands-On Edition. Uh, some of these being harder than others, as you can see by the completion rates. Uh, some former A, some power play, some fraction mines. Ooh, I like this. I like these Friday the 13th completions. Uh, Friday the 13th in three weeks. Uh, sorry, the European one was done in two weeks and uh, two years and a day and, and a week. I can't speak apparently. Um, super impressive. You've then backed that up with three weeks and a day in the North America version. And then uh, the Asian version you did in two weeks and three days, which is interesting because I do know you can auto pop those. So it looks like you might have done them legit. So uh, congratulations. That's another super impressive one right there. We've got some Frogger, uh, some Front Mission Evolved. I think that's a shooter from memory. Uh, some Full Blast, Funk of Titans. Uh, some fur wind, some fuse, fuse being unattainable. You've got the cool Game of Thrones right here. Uh, this is the Game of Thrones that was made uh, kind of like a Dragon Age kind of clone. Uh, what you, you essentially play as two different characters going on different storylines. One of them being a uh, essentially a, a, a Night's Watchman and the other one being a Prince of R'hllor. And uh, there's some really cool stuff there. I, I'm a big fan of that one, actually. I know a lot of people didn't like that game, but I did. Uh, Telltale Game of Thrones. We all know my opinion at this point. Kind of average uh, Telltale game right there. 
Gem Smashes times two. We've got some Gemini Heroes, some Ghost Giant VR, uh, some Ghost of a Tail. Whose tail? No one knows. Uh, we've got some Ghostbusters. In fact, you've got, uh, I think, I don't know. I'm going to get this so wrong. I think Ghostbusters is a Telltale game. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna double check. Let's let's just go in here. Let's just be safe. Uh, it is a Fireforge game, and it's a shooter adventure game by the sound of it. Okay, so Sanctum of Slime might be the one that I'm thinking of, and then Ghostbusters the video game is kind of like the top down four player uh, twin stick shooter of sorts, I believe. Uh, I think. One of them's delisted, I know that. I know one of them's delisted. We've got Glass the Masquerade, 100% uh, in both versions of Goat Simulator, which is kind of cool given that I know how much of a pain Flappy Goat can be. Some of those hitboxes are very unfair. Um, but you smashed it out twice, one of which in 14 hours, which is kind of cool. Uh, we then get into a scary stack of God of Wars. We have 2018, 100%. The first game on Vita and PS3. You haven't done the challenges, I'm going to assume. Uh, fair enough, some of them are actually really tricky. Uh, God of War 2, Ascension, Chains of Olympus, Ghosts of Sparta. Uh, GoldenEye 007 Reloaded actually isn't God of War. Uh, think God of War, but swap in with James Bond, and you have GoldenEye 007. Uh, golf with your friends. This is the golfing game that I think is this. I don't, this might be the one that's going down in September. It's either golf with your friends or everybody's golf. I'm uh, not entirely sure. Uh, Goosebumps the game. This is kind of like a, a telltale sort of walking sim. Relatively easy peasy. Uh, Gran Turismo 7, uh, I believe is the one that came out this year. Uh, these are these are big racing games. Uh, Grand Prix Rock and Racing. We've got some Grand Theft Auto fives here with the platinum on both the uh, both the PS4 and PS5 versions. Five being an auto pop, uh, and then four you sort of dabbled in. But uh, I'm going to assume that those unobtainable trophies, which are the online, uh, are not the 15 trophies that you earned. Sadly. Uh, we've got some Gravel, some Gravity Rush, which I've heard very, very good things about. Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters is a tie into the Green Lantern movie from like 2011 or so. Uh, Grid is a, is a relatively fun, like semi off world racing game, I believe. Off world, off, uh, off road racing game. Uh, Grid Legends is another of that series. It's the most recent one that I think came out this year. Uh, Grim Fandango is. One where you play as a, it's like a point and click game where you play as like a, a skeleton detective dude. Um, it's one that I kind of want to play myself at some point. Grim Legends, The Forsaken Bride, I've never heard of. Uh, Gree, I've heard very, very good things about. I've heard it's very, very artsy. Um, sort of the art style is what is going to drag you into uh, to Gree here. But I've heard very, very good things. It's one that I actually really want to do myself. It's a shame that it's not on uh, PS Plus at all. We've got some Guacamelees here in 2, 1, and Super Turbo Championship Edition. Some Gun Crazy, some Guns Gore and Cannoli, which is a... Uh, I've heard very good things about Guns Gore and Cannoli, actually. Uh, that's another one that I've, I've I've had eyed up myself for a uh, for a hot hot minute. We've got some Gunscape, some Hard Reset Redux, Harry Potter and the Half Blood of Prince, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, think Gears of War, but with wands. Uh, we've got some Headland, some Heavy Rain, which is another uh, of the David Cage. I think that makes up the trilogy, right? You had. Yeah, you had all three David Cage games. That's that's actually really cool to see. In fact, I think you had every David Cage game because I think you had both of the stacks for Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls. Hellblade Snow Sacrifice, I've talked about this one a lot. This is an interesting one because it delves into a lot of uh, sort of... Uh, mental like afflictions and stuff like that. A uh, really unique way of, 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 of tackling some of those harder topics. Uh, we've got Hello Neighbor and Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek. I know a couple uh, very good friends of mine did Hide and Seek recently. Uh, Hello Neighbor is one where essentially uh, you play as a group of kids who are trying to find out what the neighbor has locked in their in, in their house and the neighbor has to try and stop them. It's a, it's a cool concept. Her Majesty's Spithing is a easy peasy that I've heard fantastic things about actually. 
I've heard very, very cool things about this one. Essentially, you play as a pair of uh, astronauts sent into space uh, on behalf of Her Majesty, believe it or not. Um, and uh, I've heard it's quite quirky and, uh, and unique. Heroes Trials times two. We've got some hex tunnels, some hidden agenda, some hidden fruit time. HRQ Ace is a puzzle game. Uh, we then get into a really impressive stack of hitmans here. I love to see this. Uh, the first of the World and Assassination trilogy, 100%. Uh, the second of that trilogy, 100%. And the DLC, 100%. And then the, the third in the game, it's got the 100% done. And also Hitman 1 and 2 done again because you have to do the entirety of hitman one and two for the completion in in uh in the third game in fact i know that you did the sniper stuff in eight hours too because uh that doesn't auto pop so that's actually really impressive because that mode sucks uh hitman go is the like tile puzzle version of hitman we then get some hitman absolutions here which are sort of the more linear less open uh hitman's more story driven that people weren't as big a fan of you can see that the ps3 version does have unobtainable trophies now these were based on server-based challenges i believe uh and then blood money brings up the rear which is probably equal favorite for me i think it's it's hard to beat hitman 3 i thought hitman 3 in the world of assassination trilogy was awesome uh in fact i thought all three you know what they are better than blood money blood money is aged uh, but it is still a, a phenomenal uh, Hitman game. We've got some Home Run Derby, some Homefront. Homefront was a first-person shooter where essentially you played as a rebellion uh, fighting off against a force that has taken over the US. Uh, the first game had a lot of multiplayer that is now unobtainable. The second game is fully obtainable, but also uh, somewhat glitchy, I believe. Honor and Duty D-Day, another first-person shooter. Uh, we've got Horizon Chase uh, Turbo. This is a semi-tricky racer, actually. It's kind of like an arcade uh, twin-stick racer of sorts. Horizon Zero Dawn, very, very good open world uh, post-apocalypse post by like a thousand years uh, where you fight robot dinosaurs. It's a shame they didn't make a sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed, the think your toys that you grew up with, they now have a racer that I've heard is actually kind of awesome. Uh, I kind of want to play it myself at some point. We've got Hotline Miami 1 and 2. These are like top down, uh, think the really early GTAs or Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Very similar to those where you sort of top down twin stick trying to get through areas without being killed by like the mob and stuff like that. Uh, Hotshot Racing is another sort of arcadey racer. And then Humans Fall Flat is a, uh, like a challenge puzzle sort of game where you and a friend uh, have to like overcome a bunch of challenges whilst uh, working against sort of janky physics. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the physics kind of remind me of stuff like Surgeon Simulator, but instead of being just your hands, it's it's a whole little marshmallow man. And then uh, to wrap up the ages, we've got Hunted the Demon's Forge. Alrighty, we've got some Ico here, some infamous in the first game. You sort of dabbled a little bit into, but I'm guessing you didn't want to do the shards. I can completely understand that. And then we've got some First Light and Second Sun, with both of them taking quite a while to do. I'm guessing you weren't necessarily that hooked on them. Uh, infamous First Light being like an arena-based shooter sort of thing, and the Second Sun being the traditional uh, infamous open world of sorts. Injustice Gods Among Us is a very, very difficult uh, fighting game, essentially, whereas you play as various DC characters. We've got some Ink Explosion, some Intruders Hide and Seek. Uh, did you win the Hide and Seek is the real question. Iron Man 2's movie tie-in game, some Iron Snout, uh, it Takes Two is a fantastic game, similar to A Way Out, where you and a co-op buddy uh, essentially have to beat the game together using the power of teamwork. Another one that I would love to do at some point, hopefully very soon. Uh, I just don't have any friends, and now I'm sad again. Uh, Jack and Jill DX, relatively easy peasies. Some Jagged Alliance Rage. We've got the Jack uh trilogy we don't have combat racing here uh but jack 3 precursor legacy uh jack 2 you didn't use the uh debug too so uh i mean i'm impressed by that man uh jazz punk is a fantastic easy peasy uh it's it's like a 
quirky spy espionage game of sorts. Highly recommend Jazz Punk, actually. You can definitely finish it. I think it took me about three hours without using a guide, but as you can see, you can smash it out in an hour and a half as well. Uh, Jigsaw Abundance, some Jigsaw Finale, a lot of puzzles, a lot of puzzles here. Job Simulator, this is a VR game uh, where you do jobs. Uh, Journey to the Savage Planet is another one that I really have to go back to at some point. I was playing this with a very good friend of mine. Uh, we put it down and haven't gone back to it, but it's a very, very fun, think like open world, I guess, uh, where you're trying to just find stuff on a planet full of stuff that wants to eat you. Uh, very quirky, very good art style. I really like this game. Jurassic the Hunted, I love to see this here. This was like the first person shooter Jurassic game. Um, very unique. I have seen gameplay of it. I believe I remember watching Snickle play a bit of it. Uh, but yeah, awesome, awesome game right here, actually. Uh, and one I would like to do, but I, I don't think it's like possible to find this anymore. Uh, Just in Time Incorporated. Judge, uh, Kanan Lynch too. This is a, like a, a third person shooter of sorts where she plays a, a pair of mercenary dudes. Uh, Killing Floor 2 and Incursion are both Think Cod Zombies, like wave based, uh, wave based survival games. This is another series that I really want to do at some point relatively soon. You actually cleaned up the DLC, uh, last month, which is really cool to see. We've got some kill zones here in the third game. Uh, you've done the base game, but not the, uh, not the DLC. I'm going to assume that the DLC has some of the multiplayer trophies that are now unobtainable. Uh, Mercenary is, is now. I'm surprised that's not saying that that's unobtainable because I do know that the servers were shutting on the 12th and today is the 17th as of uh, recording this review. Um, but I know Shadowfall and Mercenary were both supposed to shut on the 12th. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Shadowfall definitely has, uh, but I don't know about uh, Mercenary. It's not getting the little icon here, so who knows? We've got some Knee Deep, some Knight's Retreat. That looks like a chess game by... by uh, Call it a hunch. Knowledge is power is like a quiz game where you can use a lot of mobile devices and stuff to uh, boost your numbers in them. But they're pretty impressive ultra rares, actually. 2.34, 4.78, and 3.67, respectively. Uh, we've got some Kung Fu Panda, which, as you can see, 0.78%. That game is actually hard. Legend uh, Shadow of Legendary Legends is, is no joke. That is a difficult game. Uh, don't mistake the Kung Fu Panda part of it it is it is challenging and that is very impressive to see right there banana sausage we've got la noir times two times three that makes up for the assassin's creeds that makes up for them right here i love to see this la noir uh is a rock star game it was actually uh developed by an australian dev uh the last triple a australian dev i believe um and you're a you're a police officer in sort of the 1950s through 60s i believe uh in la and it's very very good i highly recommend it it's a little bit aged just a little bit dated but uh still a really good game lara croft go this is like hitman go with the tile uh sliders i'm starting to see some legos coming up here uh laser league this is made by the people that actually just released roller drone today i believe uh everything is unobtainable now it is an ultra rare platinum it was like a pvp uh, laser tag game that no one cared about. Uh, we've got some Lego games here in DC Superheroes, Lego Harry Potter 5 to 7, not 1 to 4, interestingly. Uh, Legends of Chamber, Star Wars The Clone Wars, which in my opinion is actually the best Lego Star Wars uh, game, so it's kind of sad to see that one uh, being the incomplete one here. Maybe you'll go back to that at some point, potentially. Uh, Lego The Hobbit, bit of a weaker one, and then Lego Star Wars is obviously one of the best ones as well. I like the Lego games that you've picked because they're not the trash new ones. Uh, the, the newer Lego games are, in my opinion, at least personally, utter garbage they are i i don't under, i'm gonna go on a bit of a rant here but i don't understand how games like assassin's creed can be dragged through the dirt for being bloat uh bloat riddled and then something like sky wars star wars the skywalker saga which is 90 percent bloat and just gets away with it i i don't quite understand how one can be hammered by the other one card they're both trash for the bloat uh but um yeah it's 
I don't, I don't quite get that. We've got some lethal VR. We've got Life is Strange. This is kind of like Telltale. Uh, you take photos and use your time powers to make decisions and remake decisions should you not like the ones you've made. Linger in the Shadows, Little Adventures on the Prairie. This is like an OG easy peasy game. Uh, Little Big Planet. Unfortunately, all of them are down by the look of it. Little Big Planet 1, quite a lot of unobtainables. Karting definitely has unobtainables, and Little Big Planet on the Vita is obviously down as well. Live Lock, Lollipop Chainsaw is an interesting game. You play as a cheerleader who has her boyfriend's head attached to her hip because he was uh, bitten by a zombie, I believe. Um, and you cut zombies up with a chainsaw. It's it's unique. Lone Survivor is a game that uh, a good friend of mine is looking at potentially doing, I know. It's like a really pixelated, like like 16-bit uh, survival game of sorts. I'm not entirely sure. It looks interesting from the screenshots that I was looking at yesterday, um, but probably not something I'll play personally. Uh, Luna, we then get into the Mafia trilogy, which is awesome. I love, uh, I love these. 100% for Mafia 1. I would, I would definitely be curious to see how you went with the, uh, races, Bunny Chance Banana Sausage, because the race on Classic is, no joke, very difficult. I think it took me, like, a week of, uh, of occasional trying to do that one. Uh, Mafia 2 is, in my opinion, the best of the trilogy in terms of story, uh, but the Jimmy's Vendetta trophies blow. And then uh, Mafia 3 is obviously, they say it's unobtainable. I'm not entirely sure if it is or if it's just glitchy, uh, but I would definitely be cautious of that. Uh, probably the weakest of the trilogy in terms of it just being really, really repetitive. Uh, we then get some Mantis Burn Racing. Marquette. Marquette is a uh, is a puzzle game. Uh, think, think, um, oh, what's that game called? The Island one. Uh, it's, it's escaped me. I'm sure we might actually even see it on the list later below. If we do, I will uh, I will point it out. We've got Marooners. Uh, some Marvel Ultimate Alliance is a super impressive one to see here. I believe these were kind of like four, like you had a party of four and you, it was kind of like semi top down, almost like Dragon Age kind of looking. Uh, as someone who's really not big on superheroes, I have never really paid a massive amount of attention to uh, superhero games, but you've got a hefty chunk here because we also have Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom. This is a fighting game, kind of like Injustice was. Uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale version. Uh, it's typical Telltale. You sort of you're going through interactions and making decisions based on them. Uh, there is a different Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy that is actually quite good as well. I would I would maybe recommend doing that one potentially. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man, we've got Miles Morales twice, I can completely understand. I do find it interesting actually, Banana Sausage, that you have the first game done on the PS4 and Miles Morales done on the PS4 with the auto-pop for Miles Morales, but not the auto-pop for the original Spider-Man. I Is that one you plan on doing potentially or is that one you don't, maybe you don't have access to anymore? Uh, we've got some Mass Effect 2, the only one of the trilogy. Uh, you doubled your toes in, I'm guessing weren't really feeling it. That's that's fair. Uh, Max in the Book of Chaos. Uh, ooh, Max Payne 3. Ooh, this one hurts. This one hurts to see. Uh, this, all of the multiplayer is down in Max Payne 3. But this is a super impressive platinum, and you made a good chunk of it, getting about 50%. Medal of Honor and Medal of Honor Frontline, this is a... This is like the OG first person shooting powerhouse series. This was the one that was like everywhere before COD was. Uh, and Frontline was, I think, my first first person shooter personally. And I adore that game. I still remember uh, things like assaulting the beach on D-Day just being phenomenal. Like just really, really good fun. Um, but hard. I know the I know the platinums are hard, hence the uh, 3.3 and the 3.19% respectively. But super, super impressive games there. I would definitely... I think Medal of Honor, the first one there is the 2009 reboot that has a lot of multiplayer. Uh, but I would be curious to see if these are ones you potentially are planning on going back to at all. We've got some Megamind. This is a movie tie-in game. This is another uh, PS3 easy-peasy, which is kind of crazy when you think like... This was like a filthy plat 
was a three hour platinum was was like oh that's grubby you're only doing that for the platinum as opposed to what we have these days with the six minutes and 51 seconds that you've got for memory lane for example it's funny how times have evolved in the 10 years um we've got memory lane 2 meow motors uh merrily perily meta girl times three we then get into some good metros here with metro exodus as platinum not the hundred percent you have done what are you missing? Hold on, hold on. What are you missing in Metro Exodus? Because uh, you've done the base game, yeah. You've done New Game Plus, yeah. So have I. That was uh, that was a that was a time. You've then done the Kernels. Oh, you haven't done. Okay, the it's just a scratch is pretty doable. I've done that one personally. Uh, there's just one area you've got to really watch out for and then Sam's story I haven't done myself either But you've made a you made a solid chunk at that. I is it was you was it just not a very good DLC or I don't know why I haven't gone back to that yet Actually, I should should make a note of that and clean that up at some point so that, that'd be I don't know a 10-hour cleanup or something like that uh, Michael Jackson the experience this was like a a uh, a Dancing game like a rhythm button pressing sort of game from uh, memory Mills of Shadow of War, this is a Lord of the Rings open world game where you're in Mordor. Uh, the Nemesis systems are really cool where you can sort of capture uh, orcs and turn them into uh, your own personal army and have them go out and fight other orcs for you and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, fun game, story's pretty non-existent, uh, a little bit repetitive. But so much better than Shadow of War, that's for sure. We've got Midnight Deluxe times two. This is uh, by the same people who did 36 Fragments of Midnight. Holy moly, look at the Minecrafts. Uh, Minecraft PS3, 100%. Vita, 100%. PS4, 100%. Dungeons, not 100%. Uh, you've got the Platinum, but not the DLC. Uh, dungeons being almost like a Diablo sort of looking thing. So I think Minecraft meets Diablo. Uh, story mode, which is Telltale, so story mode and season two. That's awesome. That's all of them, isn't it? The only thing you haven't done is the additional list for the PS4 version, which I assume you're not going to do until it's complete. I know that every trophy on there so far, uh, you can go to a realm and pretty much auto pop, which is nice uh, because let's be honest, we're all very sick of Minecraft at this point. Um, but, uh, I would recommend that if you, if you did actually want to do that list, be, be sort of potentially hesitant or something like that. Uh, we've got some mini mode racing, some more powergies here and mix ups. I think this is like the one where it just gives you a bunch of jumbled letters and you've got to try and find words in it. Uh, Ooh, we've got some MLBs with MLB the show 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 times two. Uh, very impressive. I actually am surprised that only 17 has servers that have gone down. Because normally, like we've seen on this list uh, up above, uh, when, a, when a game comes out, the next game, when a game comes out the year after, the previous game servers do shut. So that's actually interesting that only 17 are shut out of these. But it's uh, really impressive, 100% there. And MLB obviously being baseball, uh, which is not really a sport that's popular over in uh, Australia at all. Our equivalent would be cricket. Um, we've got some Mod Nation races, some Monopoly Streets, Monopoly being, uh, Mod Nation races being a racing game and Monopoly being Monopoly. Uh, Monster Blast, we've got some Monster Energy Supercross. These are, uh, and to be honest, I kind of want to do the first game. I think we, I think we got the first game on PS Plus like years and years ago, and I've been eyeing up doing it at some point. Uh, but these are essentially Supercross games, so like, BMX dirt bike uh, races that are obviously heavily sponsored by Monster Energy Drinks, which is a a beast that I avoided for years, but have been falling into the habit of having a monster every morning because it's just such an easy way of getting up in the morning these days. Um, monster Jam Battlegrounds. We've got some Monster Jam again. These are like monster truck games. Uh, Morbid, the, Morbid the Seven Acolytes. I don't know what that is, actually. Uh, we've got some Mortal Kombat. Uh, that obviously being the classic fighting game. Uh, we've got some Moss. Moss is a VR, like, little adventure game, I believe. I've been recommended Vo uh, Moss, but sadly no VR. I think I own the second game for some reason. Uh, we've got some MotoGP. These are more uh, dirt bike races with Moto Racer 4, 9 slash uh, 10, 10 slash 11, 13 times 2, 14 times 
four, uh, 15 times two, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 times two. That is awesome. I, I'm liking that this list has so much sports games because it's a, and, and racing games. It's a genre that I'm not like knowledgeable in myself. So it is awesome to see such a large burst. And some of these are impressive. We've got uh, GP19 with a 4% ultra rare, for example. That's really, really cool. Uh, some of the, it looks like they get more common as they go. Is that maybe because they get rid of multiplayer time trials or something like that potentially? But uh, really impressive stack here, Banana Sausage. I, I think this might be second only to FIFA, which I don't think anything's topping FIFA. The FIFA one, quite frankly, is awesome. Um, I've actually, in the Discord, had an idea of adding like roles for like people who complete series, so like Assassin's Creed and stuff. Uh, if you were to remind me, I could absolutely do one for FIFA because FIFA's a big enough series. And uh, and, and I think, because I know you are in the Discord, um, yeah, you'd be you'd be more than welcome to that uh, to that role because that is really really cool. Uh, Motor Strike Immortals Legends. We got some Motor Storm. These are these are more motorbike racing ones. Motorcycle Club. Motor Strike Immortal Legends. Uh, Mr. Masaji. This was I think this came out around the same time as My Name Is Mayo. Uh, one of those sort of like beginning of the end for easy peasies i guess you would say uh but i think it was delisted pretty quickly so it's actually kind of cool that you have that uh murdered soul suspect i platinum this too um boy i don't remember anything that happened in it you've done it twice uh i bet you probably have like as much knowledge of the game as i do like just super super forgettable you play as a ghost detective solving ghost crimes or something uh, MX vs. ABT, I adore this series. Oh boy, this is, ah, this is great. This is great to see. So MX vs. ABT Unleashed was a game I played to death as a kid. Uh, it was, it was a game that got me into a lot of, uh, really cool bands like Papa Roach and Nickelback, for example, uh, were a lot of that game's, uh, soundtrack. So it's really cool to see. Uh, the, the series still exists, because quite frankly, I didn't know that they were still pumping these out. But we have MX vs. ABT All Out, Supercross, Supercross Encore, uh, MXGP, GP, Times 2, uh, GP 2019, 20, 20 Times 2, 21, Pro, uh, P2, P2 Compact. Uh, awesome, awesome. I am interested, because I see... I see that the Platinums, like, uh, like the... Like the motos that we just saw, it seems like they get more common as they go because all out is super rare with the 1.52%. But then we get all the way down to, uh, for example, this one here, GP uh, to compact, which doesn't have a platinum, but it does have a 36% completion rate, which when you consider that uh, when a game doesn't have platinum, a lot of people don't play it. Uh, that makes it even more interesting that the percentage rate is that high. Uh, definitely, definitely interested about that. We've got my brother Rabbit. We've got a lot of mayonnaise right here. You love to see the mayonnaise. I need to, I need to, I need to finish the series myself. Actually, you don't have my name's Mayonnaise for three. You have the first game twice on PS4 and Vita. You got two on PS4. Where's the third game? You got to complete the series. Uh, my time at Porsche. This is actually a game I really want to play myself. Uh, I did not know you could beat this in like four days. So banana sausage. Uh, let me know these secrets because I, I do actually want to do my time at Porsche myself. I have it downloaded and ready to go. Uh, only two NBAs. Okay. I was, I was expecting big boy NBAs. I was, I was coming into this thinking I was going to be looking at a big list, but this is interesting. I'm guessing it's a sport that you're not as big on. Uh, banana sausage you've done both prelude games which i believe are like kind of introductions to uh the the main series game that came out that year they they would always become unobtainable very very quickly as well uh but they were relatively easy to complete hence the hour and the 20 minutes respectively uh ncis the game this is kind of like the csi one and the lost one that i was mentioning earlier super early on like telltale-esque kind of games oh we got some need for speeds We've got a lot of Need for Speeds here. Uh, we've got Need for Speed. Uh, this is the rebooted one on the PS4. Uh, Need for Speed Heat, which I believe is the newest Need for Speed. It's the one that I own, actually. I, I've been meaning to play Heat uh, because I haven't played one since Most Wanted. Most Wanted is... Oh, 
fantastic such a good game uh, but we have Hot Pursuit times two, uh, Payback, Hot Pursuit's original non-remastered version, Most Wanted, which I I adore seeing that one because that game is perfection, uh, Rivals Shift, Shift 2 Unleashed, and Undercover. Uh, sadly, I would love a remaster of Underground and Underground 2. Those were... Oh, those those two and Most Wanted uh, combined with MX vs. AVT Unleashed was my childhood for races, and they were all so, so good. Uh, I definitely need to try Heat at some point, but I think my next, I think my next driving game is going to be Dirt Five because I'm I'm kind of really feeling Dirt Five for some reason. Nexomon is the uh, Retalica version of Pokemon. Uh, Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl is an interesting sort of Nickelodeon's ripoff of Smash Bros, for example, uh, but with like SpongeBob and stuff like that. Uh, do you know you can auto pop like all of the trophies in like? five seconds as well if you if you couch cop with someone that's already got the game for example uh nickelodeon car races mario kart cloned by nickelodeon nitro plus blast is no clue what that is no heroes allowed nobody saves the world uh kind of like little adventure games uh nibbler we've got null driver we've got some odd world here odd world being classics from the original ps uh ps1 uh strangers wrath i think was an xbox like an original xbox exclusive and it was more third person like adventure like action adventure from memory i'm I actually find that interesting that that was remastered to the ps3 at some point that's that's interesting uh oh my god heads oh sir hollywood roast oh sir the insult simulator i First time I'm seeing those, but that's a cheeky 2.55% ultra rare there, so you'd love to see that. We've got some Old Man's Journey. Oli Oli World 2, or Oli Oli 2, I know there's a world as well. Uh, Oli Oli 2 is is hard. I, I, I've i had a couple mates of mine go for this uh, this year, and um, very, very impressive platinum right there. Essentially, you're like a skateboarder, and you've got a go for a bunch of uh like like side scrolly worlds from left to right doing a bunch of tricks for points to beat challenges for trophies uh the the devs that made Oli well Oli well 2 just made a game called Rollerdrome which is like a uh third person arena based rollerblading shoot 'em up for points it looks interesting i have a couple good friends playing that at the moment uh shout out to the boys at missing collectible uh maybe they'll make a tales of plot for it um but very, very good game, and uh, and one that I'm kind of tempted to pick up at some point. Then we get into some Olympics games. We've got London 2022, which, what a logo. Uh, we then get Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, which I didn't even know that they made Olympics games anymore. I thought, I thought 2012 was the final one, which I think we all remember fondly from Achievement Hunter playing that like a decade ago, which makes me feel very, very old. Uh, we've got some, we've got some more Paugi here with one word, which I think is a finder word one, uh, Operation Flashpoint and Flashpoint Red River. These are both, uh, first person shooters, Operation Warcade, Operation Seven Revolution, Showdown. Uh, these are more shooters as well. Funny enough, Orc Slayer was another one of the sort of beginning of the end, relatively easy Platinums that came out. I think all you had to do was kill a bunch of Orcs for the Platinum. Uh, we've got some Override, Mech City Brawl. Uh, it's kind of like Transformers, I guess. Uh, Paranormal Activity, The Lost Soul is kind of a cool... Uh, I did... I thought that was a VR game. Okay, if it's not a VR game, that's one that I might have to pick up myself because I do like... I do like my horror games. So I might have to pick up Paranormal Activity because I thought that was VR. I watched Achievement Hunter again play, funny enough. Apparently, they're just my reference for games at this point. Uh, or, or were, I don't really watch them anymore, but, um, yeah, apparently, apparently that was my reference for a good while. Uh, Parappa the Rapper, we've got some party golf, golf, but with the party, whoop, whoop. Uh, we've got some Payday 2, Crime Over Edition. Oh, that hurts, that E-Rank hurt. That's me with Hades. That's me with Hades right there. You've got a couple of trophies and so much grind to do. Uh, I wish you the best of luck, mate. We've got some PDC World Championships. That's darts. Uh, we've got some Peasant Knight times three. It's a lot of Peasant Knights. Perfect angle. Uh, pick a pick a picks color. I'm not entirely sure what that is to be honest. Pirate Flight with some Pity Party, uh, Pity Pit. Sorry, some Pix Arc. That's kind of like Arc Survival Evolved, but pixelated. 
uh, pixel junk shooter shooting game, Planet of the Eyes. We've got some Planet RIX 13 times three, some PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. Uh, is is like a like a think a think a Super Smash Bros. but with uh, Sony mascots. I think Kratos, Nathan Drake, uh, Crash Bandicoot, maybe uh, the 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 sock puppet from Little Big Planet. Uh, it, it, it was okay. It sort of came and went from memory. Uh, please don't touch anything. Fine, fine. My, my hands are up here. I won't touch anything. Uh, we've got some Poyos, some Portal 2 classic game, uh, puzzle one where you, we're shooting portals in a wall to try and overcome puzzles. Prey, this is a game that I am currently playing that will be my 150th Platinum. Uh, I love play. Uh, I love Prey. Prey is uh, fantastic so far. It's think Dishonored, uh, but you're on a space station versing uh, monsters that can transform into anything. Uh, some very fun trophies. Grindy trophies, but very, very fun. Um, I'm hoping to have the Platinum within like the next week and uh, and a video out for it within the next three weeks. Uh, so fingers crossed I can get that done. Uh, we've got some Primal Carnage. This is like a first person shooter versus dinosaurs from memory. Some Prince of Persia. This was the OG series before Assassin's Creed uh, that inspired Assassin's Creed. Uh, we've got some Project Cars. These are more racing games in Cars, Cars 2, 3, uh, Project Starship. Prototype 2 is an interesting one. You play as a dude with superhero powers, essentially, uh, that tears the living hell out of everything. Uh, we've got some Psycho Pass. This is another visual novel, I believe. Puzzle Showdown 4K, puzzle game. Quantum Solace. This is the surprisingly good third-person shooter Gears of War clone James Bond. Like, who who would have thought I would say a sentence like that in my lifetime? But uh, reasonably good game there and actually a pretty impressive Platinum. You can see that it did have multiplayer and so there is actually quite a lot of unobtainable trophies, unfortunately. We've got some more baseball in RBI 20 and 21. Uh, looks like they are relatively common compared to the, uh, the NBL games. Uh, we then got some Rage here. Rage being uh, like an open world, almost like a Borderlands sort of thing, like post-apocalypse world of sorts. All right, next up we have some Raging Loop, some Rainbows, Toilets, and Unicorns. I've never had more questions in my life than what I do right now. Uh, Rango is the movie tie-in for the movie that I believe had Johnny Depp right. He played like a chameleon or something. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, we've only got a couple here actually. We've got uh, the first game on PS3, crack, uh, a crack in time, full frontal assault, uh, both of which I don't believe were ever really massively well received. They're kind of just average Ratchet and Clank games. We've got some Rayman Origins, which is really cool. Uh, some reality fighters. Red Dead 1, you sort of did, I assume, the story and then uh, didn't want to do things like the awful uh, gambling trophy, for example. Some Red Death. We've got some Red Faction Armageddon. Red Faction being the semi-open world sandbox on Mars where you can break like every building in the game, which was really, really cool. The particle effects uh, at the time of this release were awesome. Uh, very, very good game. We've got some Red Matter. This is a VR game. Remember me. We've got Remnant from the Ashes. I love Remnant myself. Actually, I think this is the first Souls-like that we've seen on the uh, on the list, right? We didn't see Dark Souls or anything, so that's kind of interesting. The Remnant was the uh, one you chose, and I can see you sort of... You got a little bit of a ways in, but uh, weren't really feeling it, I assume. Uh, not many Resident Evils either, which is kind of interesting, with five twice, four with the Platinum on... Sorry, five with the Platinum on PS4. You did a tiny bit on it on PS3, but I'm guessing weren't really feeling it too too much and then six with the uh with the 11 trophies in the e rank there resistance three i miss resistance so much this was a uh it was an average for a third person shoot sorry first person shooter uh on the ps3 where you were fighting an alien species that had come to earth but they were they were fun and i thought resistance 3 was actually a really good game uh, it was a lot of fun to play through this uh i played for the entirety of the game on the hard difficulty with uh with my sister which was uh, a fun experience uh resistance burning skies this was the vita spin-off uh and the last of the resistance games Rezo Gun was a launch ps4 game where 
you play as a ship shooting shapes for points. Return of the Obra Dinn is perfection. It's one of my favorite games I've played this year. Uh, you're an insurance agent that goes onto a ship and must log the uh, the fates of the crew that is missing on the ship. There's 64, I believe, 64 fates that you must track down. And uh, some of them are really, really complex, like trying to deduce who someone was just based on a vision was really, really cool. Highly recommend Return of the Didn't Don't use a guide, though. Enjoy that beast. Enjoy that one. We've got some Rick and Morty. Uh, like I said, I wasn't surprised when we saw this given uh, Accounting Plus right the way at the top of the list. We've got some Riddle Corpses times two. We've got the Ride series here with Ride uh, twice, Ride two, Ride three, four, four twice. Uh, very, very impressive. These are these are more MX uh, motorbike racing games, I believe, with relatively difficult Platinum. So that's also very nice to see. We've got some Ridge Racer. This is another racing game. Uh, Riggs Mecha uh, Mechanized Combat League. Uh, I've heard something about rigs recently. I can't remember what it was, but this is a super impressive uh, sub 1% platinum trophy. Uh, Riptide GP. We've got Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm guessing you did the same as me where you did a chunk of the story and then kind of were like, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, nah, uh, to, the, uh, to the bunch of challenges and stuff like that that are just... They're just rough. We've got some Risk of Rain 2, uh, Road Bustle three times, all completed in less than 20 minutes. That is terrifying, but good work. Uh, Robinson the Journey. Rocket League 100% is really impressive because I know there is actually quite a quite a lot of grind involved in that one. We've got some Rogue Trooper Reduxes, some Rogue Warriors. Rumbo First Blood. I, I'm assuming this is a play on Rambo First Blood. We've got some Ruiner. We've got Sackboy Twice. This is the spin-off to... A uh, little big planet uh, where you play a sack boy. It's kind of uh, more of a platformer than well, I guess. Little big planet was a platformer, but this is this is less uh, left to right side scrolly stuff, uh, and and it's it's interesting. It's one that I really want to do myself uh, at some point. Sagebrush. We then get the Saints Rose, which is always uh, cool to see. We got four twice. Uh, we got Get Out of Hell. Eel, definitely the weakest in the uh, in the series, and then we got three twice, once with the remaster and once with the original, uh, which is really really cool to see. I'd be curious as to whether or not you'll be tackling the Saints Row that I believe comes out this month or next month, uh, by any chance. Saints Row being the open world kind of more zany version of Grand Theft Auto. We've got Save the Ninja Clan. Uh, we've got both Saw games. These are awesome to see. I'm so jealous of these. Uh, the Saw games are ones that I would love to do that are, like, worth a little fortune these days. Uh, the first game follows Danny Glover's character from the first movie after the first movie, which is kind of interesting. And then the second game, I think, is an entirely new character, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, we've got Seen It. Seen It being the kind of quiz game. Uh, kind of like Buzz, actually. It's kind of cool to see some of these, like, memory lane games that we're seeing here. Some Scourge, some Screen Cheat. This is, uh, this is, Screen Cheat's a unique one, actually. As you can see, it's an ultra rare. But, so uh, this was one where it was like a four-player game where everyone was invisible and you could only see where they were based on where they were shooting or something. Uh, I played a little bit of it, but I don't remember a massive amount. Uh, we've got some Scribblenauts. Scribblenauts was a game where you made, uh, you could draw stuff to overcome different puzzles and stuff. Sea of Memories, some Sebastian Loeb Rally, uh, that being like F1 sort of stuff. Uh, Sega Mega Man Drive Collection, a collection of Sega uh, Mega Drive games, all ported into one juicy trophy list. We've got some Siru Cleaner, some Severed. I've heard very good things about Severed, actually. Uh, once again, it's a Vita game, though, so sadly, no Severed for me. Uh, we've got some Shadow Legends. We've got the Shadow Warrior Trilogy, which is really cool to see. Uh, I don't know much about Shadow Warrior 1 or 2. I do want to play 2 because it's on uh, PS Plus. But Shadow Warrior 3 I played about a month ago and I thought it was a blast. It was kind of like... How, how would I describe it? If you mix Doom with Ghost Runner... Uh, and then had like a Japanese like mythology sort of setting. It was really, really cool. The dialogue was really, really good. Uh, it was very much an arena based sort of thing. The, the story was essentially you doing platforming to get to an arena where you'd fight 
probably too many enemies at points to then go to the next platforming section to then get to the next arena. Uh, it was very basic, but it was very, very fun. I, I definitely enjoyed my time with Shadow Warrior 3. Uh, Shadows of the Damned. We got some cheeky shotgun farmers. Uh, I believe that's a side scroller of sorts. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that. It is an ultra rare though, so that's always really cool to see. We've got uh, Siegecraft Commander, one Silent Hill, and it's the worst Silent Hill, so that's interesting. Um, are, are you ever planning on potentially tackling the rest of the Silent Hills? Because if that's your if that's your introduction to the series, then uh, definitely play the others. Uh, they will redeem themselves many times over. Uh, Singularity is unobtainable with 18 trophies no longer uh, doable. We've got some skate games here with three being really, really impressive. That 1.58 uh, definitely has some very difficult uh, challenges and stuff that you have to try and get through. And then Skater XL times two here on the PS4. We've got some skyscrapers, some sky times some two. Uh, Slaying Back from Hell is one that a good friend of mine has recommended to me. Uh, I've heard the soundtrack for this is really awesome. Um, you actually played this on my birthday, so that's kind of cool. Uh, happy birthday to me. Um, but yeah, very semi-difficult side scroller where you got to like beat the game without using magic and stuff like that i believe we then get into my probably my favorite uh grand theft auto clone sleeping dogs sleeping dogs is set in hong kong i think i got that right this time I, i'm just thinking back to uh what my what my friend beautiful tormentors uh has told me i think it's hong kong because i think i mistook it when i did his list uh, and said it was Singapore. It's it's Hong Kong. I've got it right this time. Uh, you play as an undercover cop. You've got two different leveling systems, one with cops and one with, uh, with the gangland. So, like, if you drive recklessly, you'll lose your cop level, but you'll gain gang level. Same with, like, murdering people and stuff like that. Uh, very interesting game, and the story is generally fantastic. Uh, I also like that the game kind of focuses on hand-to-hand -hand martial arts combat more than it does gunplay, which is a really cool take. Uh, definitely recommend this. The DLC is pretty poopy, though. I will say that. Uh, Sleeping Dogs DLC, not great, but uh, the game itself is phenomenal. We've got some Sly Cooper here with uh, two, three, one times two, uh, and Phoebe's in time. And we've also got Sly, uh, Sly mini games. I don't think we had Bentley's Hack Pack, though. So, uh, so I think that's the technically the one side one that we've missed. I've actually just spotted a uh, a, a series that I'm very excited to see just below. But uh, this is quite a good. Uh, I'm surprised they never actually made more Sly games. Like we didn't really get any on the PS4, uh, the entirety of that generation, or now the PS5. We've got Slide. This is a tile puzzle game. Uh, we then got Smooch Summer Great Games, and then we get into a series that I adore, Sniper Elite. Uh, 300% is genuinely very tough, uh, so I'm I'm super impressed by that. And actually, some of those some of those missions on on Sniper Elite difficulty, where when you die, you go back to the start of the mission. Some of those missions are over an hour long, and the end of them, you face things like tanks that can one shot you, and um, Super impressive there. Four is a little bit easier, but is also, in my opinion, a lot more fun. Uh, I played the entirety of this pretty much with a good friend of mine, and we had an absolute blast. The last DLC is a bit rough. The last DLC left a bit of a sour taste, but I would say Sniper Elite uh, 4 is phenomenal. And then 2 here is the one on the PS3. There is a remaster on the PS4 that you haven't done here. Um, but I mean, it's it's the same sort of thing. It's less open world than three or four, uh, which I think probably might even benefit it. I kind of miss the uh, more level sort of design of Sniper Elite, but uh, they're all, they're all amazing. I would say all three, uh, two, three, and four are all you know four out of fives and stuff like that. Uh, I am definitely interested to see what Sniper Elite Five is like. You've then got Ghost Warrior as well with Ghost Warrior two and three. Um, Kind of like the bargain bin Sniper Elite. Uh, Sniper Invisible S Silent Deadly. I have no clue what that is. We've got some SOCOM here. This is like classic flag on PSMP. Uh, four unobtainable trophies, so that's definitely rough. But I know a lot of people uh, get flagged on PSMP because over a decade ago, they used other people's saves to pop trophies, uh, which 
kind of a bit of a lose-lose scenario. Uh, Sonic Sega All-Stars Racing. This is Sonic, but uh, with Mario Kart, essentially. Sonic the Fighters, I have no real clue. Uh, we've got some Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection. This is like a bundle of all of the Sonic games that are on the Sega Genesis, kind of like the Mega Drive collection that we saw uh, earlier. We've got a lot of sound shapes here. Uh, we've got some... Um, Got some South Parks. I love Stick of Truth. Not as big on Fractured But Whole, but I still think it's a really good game. Uh, Stick of Truth being kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons uh, take and Fractured But Whole being superheroes. Uh, space Explore VR. I think this is just a VR game in space. Uh, spare Parts. Spec Ops The Line is a fantastic third person shooter. Uh, definitely a darker one. Some of the themes that this game tackles are no joking matter at all. Uh, but definitely, definitely a really good one. Fubar difficulty is no joke, so congratulations on that one, Banana Sausage. We've got Spider-Man, uh, Edge of Time, and Shattered Dimensions. These are both hard to track down these days because Shattered Dimensions is actually quite a lot of fun. Uh, you essentially go through a couple of different uh, dimensions and stuff, which is really, uh, which is really interesting. We've got Splatter House, some SpongeBob Hero Pants, uh, Sports Friends is like a competitive uh, sports game. We've got some Spy Chameleon, Spy Hunter, a lot of spies. Uh, you got a lot of spies in your account. Square Boy vs. Bullies Time 2. We've got a couple Star Wars. The first Battlefront, you've done the Platinum. Uh, I'm guessing you, you don't have any real plans to tackle the uh, the really grindy DLCs. And then Force Unleashed, you've done the base game, but no DLC. And then you've kind of only really dabbled in Unleashed 2, which I can understand because the first game is quite a lot better than the, uh, than the second game there. Uh, Star Blood Arena, you've got 100%. There is some unobtainables here. In fact, everything but one trophy is unobtainable. Uh, at that point, just make the list unobtainable. Uh, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of rough, but it is a that is a very impressive one uh, percent platinum here. I really like how this is a very sports and competitive based uh, account. It's kind of really cool to see. We've got some Steins Gate. We've got some Stick Fight the game. Uh, some Stifled, some Stick Bold. Storm Boys are unique, easy peasy. Uh, I don't play easy peasy myself, but this is one set in Adelaide, Australia, which has me kind of like curious to add that to my list at some point, just because it's set in Australia and that's such a, a rare setting. Uh, we've got Strange Brigade. This is made by the same people that did Sniper Elite. Uh, essentially, think Sniper Elite or Zombie Army Trilogy, but there's four of you and you are fighting off against mummies and stuff like that, like supernatural stuff. Uh, I've heard the trophies are actually fairly difficult, some of those DLC ones. So I'm definitely interested in... That's one that I would really like to tackle at some point in the uh in the future we've got some striker's edge we then have a lot of subnautica now on now you've done the console commands for this i can absolutely see this here because i did it myself uh, i played a lot of subnautica on pc unfortunately in my opinion the console uh, port is not great there's a lot of like input lag and stuff like that uh but very very good game you're essentially uh you've crash landed on an aquatic planet and you have to work out how to leave the planet and you can build different vehicles and bases and stuff. It's it's very fun. I uh, think the forest, but underwater. Uh, we've got some Suicide Guys, some Super Destronaut, Super Exploding Zoo, Super Hang On, Super Karatama. Jeez, there's a lot of supers. Uh, Super Pixel Races. This is a racing game. Super Super Blast. Soccer. Uh, super, super Soccer Blast, America versus Europe. Uh, way to leave out us Australians, my feelings. Super Street Game, uh, Super Street The Game times two. Super Volleyball Blast, Super Weekend Mode times two. Superhero X, Super Hot. Uh, super Hot's actually a good one. Uh, super Hot is essentially you play as a like a like a test dummy almost, uh, and you are trying to fight other enemies in, in sort of really fast quick time you got to use a lot of fast reflexes and stuff uh the fellas at missing collectible have a fantastic video on that game shout out to them uh we've got some supremacy mma times two here uh syndicate was like a weird sort of third person shooter from memory uh we've got some uh tabletop racing some tarcoma 
some tales from the Borderlands. This is the Telltale uh, version of Borderlands that actually had a reasonably good story from memory. We then have uh, Team Sonic Racing. This is more Sonic with carts. We've got Tearaway Unfolded twice, which is really cool to see. This is, uh, I think, Super Mario 64, but with little uh, paper. The world's made out of little shards of paper and stuff like that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, we've got some Tekken here. Tekken was my fighting game growing up. So it is nice to see two Tekken games uh, right here. We've got some Telefrag. Telling Lies is like a like a movie sort of game. You're, you're just more making decisions and stuff. We have two ter Terminator games here with Salvation being uh, one of the like OG easy games, which again, kind of crazy that it took like four hours to do. And this was considered easy. Uh, four days, not four hours. And then Resistance is uh, a more recent one that's kind of interesting. I... It's clunky, it's not well polished, but it's it's interesting. It's set in the Terminator universe, uh, which was kind of cool to play through. Uh, Test Yourself Psychology, the, the name, it literally has trophies as the uh, pictures, so that's... That's kind of cool. Uh, we've got some Tetra Escape. That's you, the Amazing Spider-Man movie tie-in game. That was actually pretty good. The first, uh, there's two of them, the Amazing Spider-Man and then the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Number one's actually pretty good. Uh, I would definitely recommend that one. The American Dream, uh, The Assembly, The Bunker, The Bunker being a tie-in like movie sort of game. The Chronicles of Riddick's are really cool. Uh, these obviously uh, generated then the movies with Vin Diesel, uh, my clone. Uh, we've got the Copper Canyon Shootout. I've never heard of this. The Crew and the Crew 2, two uh, pretty good Ubisoft racing games. It's set in sort of like the US, I think. Uh, we've got The Darkness 2. This was like a, I think it's based on a comic book, uh, like a, a first person action, uh, first person shooter where you have two tentacles on your back that can eat people. Uh, which is definitely an interesting spin on uh, first-person shooters. I think the first game, you can also watch the entirety of the movie To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, if, if you so choose in that game. Uh, the Deadly Tower of Monsters. I've heard pretty good things about this too. We then have a lot of Skyrim here. You, you've dedicated a lot of time to Skyrim with uh, the PS3, the PS4, the PS5, and the VR one. Uh, so that's actually super impressive. The VR one being very rare with the 1.7%. I assume just because that is a lot of VR that you have to do. Uh, hence the three years and eight months. Uh, the Escapist and The Walking Dead one. I've, we've seen these on quite a few accounts, I believe. The Forest is fantastic. I love that game. It is a open world survival game. We crash land on an island and have to find your son fighting through hordes of uh, cannibal islanders. It's a, it's a really cool game. The Guns Between. The Godfather 2 was actually a really good uh, movie tie-in slash GTA clone. Uh, the Grand Tour, wow. I have not seen this in a hot minute. This was a weird game because didn't it release episodically? I, I think this game released episodically uh, and it was essentially based on... Oh no, what's that show called? Uh... Top Gear. It's based on, uh, it's the host of Top Gear doing a tour around the world or something. Uh, the Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. I think that's like a twin stick shooter from memory. The Inner World. The Innsmouth, the Innsmouth case is interesting. I kind of want to look into that because it's based on, uh, Lovecraft, I assume, and I do really enjoy the Sinking City and Call of Cthulhu. So do let me know if that one's, uh, worth a crack banana sausage the impatient the invisible hours we've got both last of us games here with the ps3 having its servers being very closed so i'm assuming these are unobtainable dlc trophies for you which kind of sucks and then you've done the platinum for the last of us 2 but you haven't done the permadeath and the grounded difficulties which fair enough um Got some little acres. The Long Reach is one that I'm kind of curious about myself. Aragorn's Quest is a really bad Lord of the Rings game. Uh, very, very bad one. The War in the North, on the other hand, is an amazing one, uh, where essentially you play as a party of three in Northern Middle-earth during the War of the Ring, which is a really interesting spin on it, and you're fighting uh, the the hordes of Angband and stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, one that I would love to do if I, uh, if I ever get a PS3 uh, linked to my account. I do own a PS3. It's, it's down there somewhere, but... Um, 
I've never bothered to hook it up to Symmetry just because that opens so many games to the backlog. Uh, the Mean Greens, the Mooseman. I have so many questions about the Mooseman. Uh, the Order 1886. I enjoyed this one. This was a relatively short uh, action game where you shot at werewolves. The Outer Worlds was the game made by Assidian, the people that did Fallout New Vegas. Uh, and it's essentially it's essentially a Fallout game. Like open world, you go to a bunch of various different planets. You've got com you've got companions and stuff like that. I would like to do it at some points. Uh, I think I own the DLC. I'm not entirely sure. So that's one that is definitely on my to-do list. Uh, we've then got the park, which is like a like a really short but interesting horror game where you're looking for your son in a theme park at night and uh, and fighting against your flashbacks. Uh, it's kind of unique. Uh, the Playroom VR is a really cool one. The Raven is one uh, that a fellow YouTuber. I believe recommended uh, at some point. I think I've, I've heard pretty good things about it. Actually, I think was it was it Trophy Pop that recommended this? Maybe uh, the Saboteur was a really good. Uh, almost, it, it's almost like an Ubisoft sort of thing where you're in occupied World War uh, World War Two France and. Uh, it's all like in black and white until you liberate a district and then it gets color back. It's a, it's a really cool concept. We then have The Sims 4 done in four hours. You used the gallery, didn't you? I'm, I'm on you. I know, I know, because I knew it myself. It's, it's funny when you see stuff like that and you're like, ah, yes, I recognize that pattern from my own account. Uh, we then get The Town of Light, uh, which is another one that I'm semi-curious about. I think that's another detective sort of thing. Um, I think it's a, I think if you buy Martha is dead, you get that game for free, right? If you buy the deluxe edition of Martha is Dead, which is obviously notorious for its um, for its censorship with Sony. Uh, Merc KK does a fantastic video on that game. Uh, we then have The Walking Dead Telltales. In fact, we have quite a lot of Telltales here. We've got The Walking Dead Times 3, A New Frontier, uh, Onslaught, which I don't know what that is. I don't know what Walking Dead Onslaught is because it's not a Telltale one. It's not the crappy 2013 Walking Dead and it's not Saints and Sinners. So I, I don't actually know what that one is. Uh, Walking Dead Season 2 times 2. We got The Witcher 3. Uh, that hurts that that's only just been dabbled in. Uh, absolutely fantastic game. Banana Sausage, this would be one of my rare recommendations to uh, to clean up potentially, uh, should you wish. Very, very good RPG. Uh, unpopular opinion, but The Witcher 2's plot is better than The Witcher 3's. Um, the Wolf Among Us three times. This is kind of like a, this is another telltale, but it's kind of like a dark and gritty uh, fairy tale gang drama, like crime drama. Uh, fairy tale creatures are being picked off or something. Uh, the World of ne of Nubla is a kind of cool one that we see here. Theme Park Simulator. You make theme parks for an hour for the Platinum. Uh, Thug Life. Timber Tennis Versus. We've got some Time Machine. Uh, Titanfall 2's Platinum is impressive. This is one uh, I haven't done the... Uh, I actually haven't done this one, so that's really cool to, uh, to see there. Uh, I'm definitely very jealous. We've got some TMNT Turtles in Time Reshelled. Uh, Toem, I think that is. Uh, we've got some Ghost Recon, Wildlands, and Breakpoint. I actually plan on doing Wildlands fairly soon at some point, or at least starting it. Uh, hopefully I can get a couple of, uh, of, of good friends of mine to, to join me in the chaos that should ensure. But uh, you have the 100% the in Breakpoint and uh, the base game Platinum. I don't think that's any DLC, but uh, that's super impressive to see. I think that's actually the first time in this series we've seen both of them on a list together. Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong, of course, but I think this is the first time, so that's really cool. Uh, we've got Tom Clancy's The Division, just dabbled in. Uh, we've got Tomb Raider. This is the 2013 reboot that has so many hours of multiplayer medkit grinding. You take a medkit from one point, you take it to a different point. It's... Yeah, it's... It, it changed me forever. Uh, we got Tomb Raider Anniversary, and then the Definitive Edition is the 2013 game again, but on the PS4. So you did the med kits times two, which is terrifying. Uh, do you need a hug? Are you okay? Uh, we've got some Tomb Raider Legends, some Tomb Raider Underworld. These are more uh, sort of the PS3 ones that took more of a dark sort of turn. Um, and weren't massively well received, in all honesty. Total Reliable... <laughs> 
English. Total Reliable Delivery Service is a pretty fun co-op game where you've got to deliver packages to the right place. Got some touring carts, some transference. This is a game that I've looked at potentially doing myself at some point. Uh, Transformers Dark of the Moon is a movie tie-in to Transformers Dark of the Moon, also known as the one without Megan Fox. Uh, trying to Trivial Pursuit, uh, classic Chris game. Tron Evolution, this is a movie tie-in game, I believe. We've got Trover Saves the Universe, which I think is made by the same guys that did Accounting Plus and the Rick and Morty game. Uh, I thought it was a VR game, so that's interesting that it's not uh, put here as an icon. Uh, we've got some truck racing, some tumble of VR. You you've got the you draw. Wow. Uh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing those might be the. Tr Hold on, let's have a look. Do you have the? Do you have the trophies for the you draw? Do you have the trophies for the you draw? Oh, mm. You can get this platinum. You have the trophies that are unobtainable. The trophy that is unobtainable, as you can see here by the uh, orange frame as opposed to the green, is exported a painting. And uh, you did that in 2014. So um, that's a platinum that you can go back to if you still own a huge draw, if you're one of the six people. Uh, UFC 2009 Undisputed is super impressive. Uh, some of those early Fight Club games with the belts and stuff are, were, are notoriously hard to get those Platinums. So this is a really impressive one. Ultimate Chicken Horse Times 2 is awesome to see. This was actually my 100th Platinum. Uh, this is like a four player game where you've got to reach the end, but you're trying to make the route to the end significantly harder for the three other people there. Uh, so you might put like saw traps and stuff down and it can get very chaotic. It's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, ultimate ski jumping 2020 is a thing. Uh, we then get into a, a bunch of uncharted and then the, this one here is impressive. Uh, uncharted two, uh, you've done the base game, but not the DLC on the PS3. That means that the DLC is all unobtainable because the servers have shut. Uh, same story for the third game here. Uh, but uncharted 400% is impressive cause that is, uh, hard. The, the, the DLC, and this is kind of like a wave based thing. Uh, it was very heavily built around you paying money, uh, to the game. And, uh, and, and it's, a as you can see there, 10% for the platinum, but sub 1% for the hundred percent. It's a, it's a beefy boy. It's, it's not fun at all. Uh, and it's quite frankly, pretty miserable. I've done most of it myself, but, uh, sadly not all of it. Uh, we've got Golden Abyss and Lost Legacy to round out our Uncharted's. We've got some Undertale here. There was, this game was all over the internet for a good while there in like 2018. Uh, Until Dawn, this is like a walking sim horror game where your actions might lead to the deaths of people around you and stuff. It's it's interesting. It then led on to uh, the the uh, Man of Medans and the, the Quarries and, and those sorts of games. Up is a movie tying game. Valentino Rossi is a racing game. Uh, vampire is a really unique RPG where you play as a vampire in uh, 1920s England, like 1918 or something like that, 1919. Uh, post, very, very, very recently post-war uh, London, you play as a vampire doctor. Uh, the trophies are kind of poop because you have to beat the entire thing without eating anyone and eating people is how you get XP to level up. So throughout the whole game, every enemy is like ridiculously overpowered compared to you. Uh, Vanquish is a relatively challenging uh, third person shooter, I believe. Virginia is a walking sim. Uh, volume is, is, is what my voice is at all times. Uh, v Robot, V Rog. No clue what those are. I guess VR, VR mini games of sorts, I'm guessing, based on the uh, time it took to complete them. We've got some Waltz the Wizard, uh, Wanted Weapons of Fate, some War Theater. Uh, Warface is another third, first person shooter. We've got some Warhammer here, which is kind of cool. Uh, in 4000 Space Marine, uh, End Times of Vermintide is kind of like a Left 4 Dead clone. And it's very, very fun, actually. I. Probably would never go for them myself, but uh, definitely very, very fun Left 4 Dead clones that are very challenging. Uh, Watch Dogs, Ubisoft's open world GTA clone that a lot of people don't like. I It took me like six months to get into Watch Dogs 1. I tried twice and found the early game boring as all hell. Uh, once I got into it, though, I really enjoyed the first Watch Dogs. Uh, we should talk. We should talk. 
uh we are here we are here uh together we are here too these are co-op uh like escape room sorts of games you're you're essentially using teamwork to get out of scenarios and stuff kind of like a way out or it takes two for example um we then have some welcome park this is the the game that's built into the vita that sort of shows off its various different controls and all that fun stuff uh some whispering willows who wants to be a millionaire me me please um witching tower was its turning we then get into a beefy chunk of wolfenstein's here uh you've got the 2009 one which is really cool because i actually really enjoyed that game uh as you can see a lot of the multiplayer is now completely unobtainable uh wolfenstein 2 you, you dabbled you dabbled on uh i'd be interested to see if you ever decide to go back and do mine lieben uh cyber pilot is the vr sort of spin-off to young blood i believe uh new order is the first of the rebooted ones uh following bj blaskovich uh very very good one i'd say it's the best of the four so far the old blood is like a a prequel to the new order but it's a lot of people love it i sort of just found it okay i i think new order is definitely my favorite and then young blood you play as bj blaskovich's daughters in occupied france the this is a this is a mixed bag i enjoyed every second i played with my good friend uh peter from missing collectible um that was that was a blast that's you know some of the most fun multiplayer i've played um the trophies suck they're all very grindy it's maxing out weapons and all this sort of stuff uh in a game that doesn't have that many enemies so it's sort of you're just grinding the same areas over and over again um and it's that's a bit poop that's a bit poop not gonna lie uh wonder book book of spells uh no clue we then have a mass of Pauggies here with some word searches and some sudoku and some word wheels for for good luck there uh we've got some quizzes world war z's 100 is really impressive as well doesn't surprise me given that we saw uh back for blood earlier uh this is kind of semi based on the book slash movie with uh with brad pitt uh it, it's kind of like left for dead where you're fighting off against hordes of zombies i've heard it is super super grindy however and then we get into uh world racing championship is that what this is called uh or rally i think it's world rally championship right uh we've got 10 3 4 5 7 9 super impressive all here um and and some of the most of them didn't take you particularly long either besides uh number four here that took uh, nearly two years the rest of them all took about a week which is really cool to see we then get into my my favorite racing game uh on the ps4 wreckfest wreckfest is fantastic it's like uh you've got a lot of off-road racing you've got some demolition derbies uh you can set it so that you're a bus versus 23 lawnmowers it's a blast and the the music soundtrack is is oh it, it, it might even beat mx versus amt for me it is it is top notch highly recommend wreckfest uh you smash it out a lot quicker than i did too we then get into holy moly this is some wwe we have WWE 12, 14, 15, 16, 17 times 2, 18, 19, 20, 22 times 2, uh, Legends of WrestleMania, SmackDown vs. Raw, uh, Raw 2011. That is, that's an impressive list. I am wondering if uh, if you'll do Battlegrounds at some point. As you can see, a lot of them have unobtainable trophies. These to do with the servers being closed, of course. Uh, as someone who enjoys WWE myself, this is, this is really cool to see. Um, I would definitely be curious to see if you recommend uh, 2K22, given how dreadful 2K20 was. Um, super impressive here, definitely. I, I have a lot of... Uh, I haven't really played any of the new ones, but I have a lot of the classic PS2 ones on the uh, on the old shelf that is, that is off camera here. Um, but I have a lot of the 2007s and stuff like that. We then have some X-Men here in Wolverine and Destiny. Uh, Wolverine being a tie into the movie, Destiny being like a side scroll and beat em up. Uh, Xenon Races, we got Zing the Land Beyond. Uh, your Psy Ninja, Zerotopian, we've gotten into the Zs, we're near the end now. Uh, Zerotopian Invasion, Zombie being the Ubisoft semi-open world zombie game, it's really cool. I love to see Zombie Army 4 as well actually. Uh, zombie Army 4 is 
fantastic fun. I really enjoyed this game. I'm actually the fastest achiever in Zombie Army 4, so uh, that's that's my cool uh, that's my cool achievement in uh, on PSMP is I'm the fastest achiever. Here. I am curious what trophy you are missing here. Uh, let's have a look. I think I know what it's going to be. Uh, Ragnarok, Ragnarok, and Death Collector. Okay, it's not what I thought it was going to be. I, uh, the Ragnaroks are kind of fun. They're, they're like a semi-campaign in themselves. And the Death Collector sucks. It's The rest of the Horde maps are essentially you just play on a map and you shoot zombies and that goes up the waves. COD style. Uh, Death Collector is, is it's, its own beast. You've got to do like objectives during you got to like run to a certain point to trigger the wave um but yeah very very fun game i i love zombie army 4 quite a lot uh you then have trilogy as well i haven't finished trilogy personally i should probably get around to that some point and then uh, and then we round out the two which i don't speak japanese sorry so i'm not entirely sure what they say i think the top one says subscribe to symmetry and the bottom one says because he's really really cool but uh yeah that's that's the end of the list uh banana sausage you have a giant profile um very 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 impressive one though i love seeing the wwe's were really impressive the fifas uh the mx versus avts the fast and furious i loved seeing so many races we've had one profile on this series uh before that had quite a lot of them as well so that makes a very unique little group of uh, of you guys that have so many really cool races and stuff but i'm gonna wrap the video up now because we've been going for a hot minute now um fantastic profile thank you so much if you've made it this far do be sure to leave a cheeky like or a subscribe i'll probably chuck up uh a video or two up here of the of the last profile review or something uh if you do you need something to keep watching while you boost um if you did make it this far and you want your own video uh, and you want your own profile listed do join the discord or leave your profile in the comments below and i'll add it to the list and i will see you next week i miss you already bye bye